All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we're gonna to be going over how to sync two different Synology NASes that can be located across the country or even across the planet to each other. And this is a great feature for businesses especially because what it allows you to do is it allows you to have two different offices basically have the exact same file system and anytime one of them changes, it gets sent over the other one. And this is so much better than if you just had one NAS and both offices were pulling from it. Because wherever that NAS is located, that office is gonna have great speed to it, it's gonna have local connection, be able to download everything with basically no latency. But the office that was remote would have a huge latency and it could take up a ton of bandwidth. What this allows you to do is pretty much just have the NASs syncing back and forth, and so only changes have to be sent across the network. And so that means if people read a document 15 times, it's not going to have to send 15 copies of that document over the network. Instead, that document is already on the local network, and so it's gonna be so much faster, and it doesn't have to get sent back and forth, really reducing your network bottleneck. Then if somebody does do a modification to a document or whatever, it'll sync those two changes between the two offices. Now, this is a situation where you can get into a little bit of trouble if you have two different people trying to edit the same document at the same time, because there is going to be a slight latency compared to something like an SMB folder where there's basically no latency. So say me and another person at another office both open a Word document at the exact same time. If we do it at the exact same time, there's a chance that locking file has not made it to the other NAS by the time that the other person opens it which would mean there would be a bit of a conflict. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. It'd be a pretty rare case, but do watch out for that. Luckily, Synology Drive has a really easy past version history, and so you can just use that, but that is just one thing to watch out for. Another really common use case for this are video editors, especially during this pandemic, where you wanted multiple people to be able to video edit all at their own homes or their own centralized offices. What you could do is basically have all of your editors have a NAS at their house and have the raw files all automatically synced to everybody's house. One thing to note, basically the upload speed of wherever those files are put in is going to be pretty much shared between the download speed of all of the NASes that are connecting to it. So if you only have five megabytes upload, it's going to take a really long time to send hundreds of gigabytes of files. And so if you are doing this, I would recommend uploading the large files to whichever office has the largest upload speed, and that way the other ones can easily sync to it. But that's something that you're just gonna have to figure out, and I am planning on doing an in-depth video on how to set this up for video editors, because it's actually a setup I've done for multiple video production houses who want everybody to be able to edit video without having to ship hard drives across the country. Another common use case I've seen for this are small businesses who the owner also wants a NAS at their house so they can easily edit from home and it's got an added benefit of a second copy of the data. So as long as you have versions, basically if the first NAS totally went down, he could always just bring in the NAS that, that is at his house and stick that in his office and everything's already set up the same way and so you could just roll over really quickly. And so that is a great option for this as well. That can kind of give you secondary peace of mind, though it is not strictly a backup. If you are looking for a strict backup, I would really recommend Hyper Backup over this because it is designed to be a lot more robust to files and corruptions and things like that. Instead, what Synology Drive is really meant to do is to sync two file systems. Though it is a second copy of the data, so it does have that property. If you're looking for that, it is additional peace of mind. And so actually setting this up is incredibly easy. Really all you need are two different NASes, and you need to go ahead and install Synology Drive on both of them, and I've already done that. Then you need at least one of them accessible via DDNS, a VPN server, or Quick Connect. And so really, if you're looking for the utmost security, I would recommend a VPN server and have the two connected, but that does sometimes run into some issues and it can be a really complex setup for people. My recommendation would be, if you wanna use Quick Connect, that is okay. Just make sure that everybody has strong passwords and keep your NAS up to date. Synology really has not been hit by very many vulnerabilities. The one notable one was many years ago where there was a default admin, admin, username, and password that did not get changed. And so that is the one thing that really hit Synology. Other than that, they seem to do a very good job with security. Though if this is any sensitive or crucial data, I would highly recommend setting up a VPN server because it's just much better peace of mind. And I've got a tutorial and I'll leave that in the description below. 
All right, and so as you can see right here, I've gone ahead and logged in to the NAS that is going to be the NAS that has the files on it already. And so you can see right here, I've already installed Synology Drive, but we actually wanna go up to Synology Drive Admin Console. And basically what you wanna do is you want to set up whatever folder is going to sync as a team folder. So you can see I've got a lot of them right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and choose the tutorial folder, and I'm going to click enable on it. And that is going to turn it into a team folder, and that means it can be synced. I'm going to choose 32 versions, the maximum amount of versions, and televersioning. That way it's not just the last 32 versions, it, they kind of spread them out so you have more options. Just in case you save a file 32 times in a day, at least you'll have a few versions from previous days. And then another thing that's also really nice to do is rotate versions regularly. So this is pretty much how long a version can live for maximum time. So say you delete a file, if you have it set to 120 days, you won't get that storage back for at least 120 days. I'm gonna do 30 days, because that's just what works for me. It totally depends on how much storage you have, how much your files change, and things like that. But I would start high, and then if you need space, lower that down. And now just click OK. I go over this a lot more in depth in my setting up Synology Drive, so go ahead and click that. I'll be in the link in the description, and that goes over exactly how it's set up. And so now you can see I've got this tutorial folder, and there's some files in here. And now we can go ahead and set this up for Synology Drive Sync. And so now I'm gonna go over to my other NAS. And this NAS, I would recommend the first time, especially if they're massive files, you can set them up locally on the same network. And so the first time sync will happen over instant local speeds, which will have a 10 or one gigabit connection, which will make this thing fly. And then after that, you can set up remote. But if you don't have that large of files or if it just doesn't make sense to do that, you can set this up re remote, no problem whatsoever. So we're gonna go into the second NAS right here. And we're just gonna go ahead and open up Synology Drive Share Sync, which is automatically installed whenever you install Synology Drive. And so note, this is DSM-7, but this will also work in DSM-6. They're pretty much the exact same. And so now it's just gonna walk us through it, and it's incredibly easy. Just go ahead and click Start Now. And now, you just say your domain name or Quick Connect. So for me, this is just being done locally, so I'm gonna use tank.spacerex.co and my username and password. I believe this does have to be an admin username and password, so if you've got the admin account, use that. And you're definitely gonna to wanna to use SSL. And so now just go ahead and click Next. By the way, if you are using Quick Connect in your Quick Connect ID here, or if you're on a VPN, enter however you're gonna resolve that VPN IP address. And so you can see right here, I've not set up signed SSL certificates for the tank.spacerex.co because it only resolves locally. And so you might see this. I get a lot of questions about this because fundamentally this is actually not insecure. Basically, when you click yes to this, it is saying, okay, I trust this certificate. And so since we set this up ourselves, we know we can trust that certificate. Now, if somebody were to set up a man in the middle attack later on, it would drop this error again and you might go, hmm, maybe I shouldn't trust that. But because it is still an SSL certificate, we're gonna get all the SSL encryption and so you don't have to worry about that. Really all you're losing out on is the self identification of yes, this is definitely right. And so now all we have to do is choose the folder that we want to share sync. So right here, I'm going to choose tutorial. And interestingly enough, I'm not sure actually how this is gonna go because I already have a tutorial folder on here that's also named tutorial. And so we're gonna select that and I think it's gonna go ahead and merge those changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click done. They don't have any of the same files in it, so I'm interested to see what happens here. And so right now, it's gonna go ahead and set that up. And so we can go into file station, tutorial, and we can see that the files from my tank are now in here. And so these are all there, and it's basically merged the two folders. So one thing you could do, and I've not tested this out yet, is ship a hard drive across and basically set up the exact same file structure, and then Synology Drive Sync should go ahead and say, oh, these are all the exact same files. We don't have to upload them, and that could be a great way of doing a first time setup without having to have them in the same room while also still having a really fast setup. All right, and so now it's really just that simple. It's just gonna go through and sync these files between the two. You can see I've got quite fast download speeds right now because we're over a local 10 gig connection, and so it's just gonna go through and sync them. You've got some options here for some custom configurations. 
So you can say, okay, I only want to sync certain folders. There's file filters, there's everything. And you can really choose exactly what you would like. And so now I want to go ahead and show this by basically mounting both shared folders to my computer and showing you how it works. This would be like if you had the two different units in two different offices across the country, it would work the same way. It's just, they're both local here. So it is going to happen a little bit faster and we'll be able to see it very easily. All right, and so now all I've done here is I've mounted the same shared folder from the two different NASes, both to my thing. So this one right here is my DS1621 Plus that I've been using as a test bed. Synology sent me that, by the way. I do have to send it back, sadly. And then there is the DS1890 Plus that is mine. And so you can see right here that the files in them are exactly the same. And so let's go ahead and see what happens if we add in a new file. I'm just gonna drag this, I think it's a few hundred megabyte file, quickly goes over and look how fast that was. Immediately it goes in between the two. And once again, this is over a local network. So this is gonna be faster, but this is incredibly fast how well this works and really could just be a huge resource for whatever your needs are. It's really impressive how quickly these two things can sync and how well it manages that. And it just works really well. There's a lot of offices that in this day and age could really benefit from this because everybody's dynamically working and there's so many places who need to be able to sync these files back and forth. And especially for a file system where it's mostly Word documents, this is going to work incredibly well and you're not gonna have people just waiting and waiting and waiting for the file to come through. And that's all there is to it. Now these things are just synced and are pretty much just going to work. The other thing is if one of them goes offline, so say your site goes offline, Basically, you'll be able to still modify the files and it'll just merge in the changes later. All right, well, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Synology Drive Share Sync is an absolutely awesome feature for businesses, especially people who need to deal with large data sets and have immediate access to all the files. I'm going to be doing an in-depth video on how to set up Synology Drive Share Sync or Synology Drive for video production houses who need to be able to have multiple editors working, not in the exact same location, so stay tuned for that. And go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. Also, if you want to start sponsoring the channel and really helping me out, there's a link for that in the description. You get early access to all my videos that I'm just sitting in the backlog. All right, have a good one. Bye.